beast. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to play one of these things. Mostly because of a friend, a friend of my father's, a guy named uh, Hughie Ledbetter. Everybody called him Lead Belly. And Lead Belly called himself the king of the 12 string guitar. And he wasn't kidding. That guy could play, I mean, he could play stuff. Even to this day, there's stuff he played which, is, which would still be extraordinary. And he played everything, not just the guitar. He played fiddle and banjo, mandolin, squeeze box, he played the piano. If it made a noise, Led Belly could play it. And uh, I just always, you know, I, I loved, as, well, as a matter of fact, the first memory I have in my entire life, I was about two years old. I remember standing there, came up next to Led Belly, came up to his knee, and I was holding on to a pant leg or something like that. There's no conversation, I remember. Just standing there. And I asked myself a few years ago, why would standing next to somebody for a couple of seconds, maybe a few minutes at most, why would that moment in time stay etched in your brain for your entire life? There's no answer to it, I was just asking, you know. <laughs> I know I was two because by the time I was three, he was already gone. He was, he was an old man at the time. He was born in 1880-something down in Louisiana. He'd spent time in the penitentiary system down there. He got in a fight, somebody died. He was doing the time for that. And he was going to be in there a very, very long time. But something extraordinary happened. They let him out. They gave him a full pardon because he wrote great songs. What a freaking concept. <laughs> I mean, imagine the songs that are locked up even now. He went around, you know, he went along, he wrote songs like the Midnight Special. And, Good night, Irene. Songs people know, they don't always know where they came from. And I grew up singing them, I grew up, you know, listening to them. And I inherited other friends as I got older, as time went by. Guys like Pete Seeger, who I played with for over 40 years, you know. And uh, Pete and I played... <laughs> Pete and I played about a dozen shows a year, you know, and uh, for... for like I said, for decades. He passed away just earlier this year. He was 94 years old. And uh, I remember one time he calls me up when he's 85. So we're playing together for 30 something years. He calls me up, he said, Arlo, I can't do those big shows with you anymore. I can't sing like I used to sing. I can't play like I used to play. And I just said to him, Pete, look at our audience. <laughs> They can't hear like they used to hear. <laughs> Might not be a problem. He said, well, maybe you're right. So the last show we played together was just two months before he passed away. This last November, we played at Carnegie Hall together in New York City. It was an amazing thing to see a 94-year-old guy up there who had distilled all the stuff. He, yeah, he was right. He couldn't sing or play like he used to, but he had distilled it to what he could do. And the, um, the, the stuff that came through, it's just amazing. And if you ever saw Pete, you know, he, he's known for playing this long neck banjo that he basically invented, but he also played the 12 string guitar. If anybody ever saw Pete playing the 12 string, they was looking at Lead Belly because Pete stole everything he could from Lead Belly. And naturally, I stole everything I could from Pete. <laughs> that's, that's the way it works. And I love how it moves down through the generations, you know. It wasn't the show I ever did with Pete Seeger that didn't have a Lead Belly song in it. I won't let tonight be any different. Here's an old Lead Belly song I always loved. Mm -hmm. 